put your shoes on the shelf. Put your rubbish in the bin. No, that wasn't your mother talking. I was actually repeating lines found on signs inside Australian mosques and Muslim places of worship. Why signs from mosques? Well, Australia has an expanding Muslim population. From the beginning of Muslim immigration to the present, in Australia, Muslims and their spaces have been under heavy scrutiny. In the context of this kind of social and political hyper-surveillance, how do Muslims engage in self-surveillance? One of those ways is to use regulatory signs, and I wanted to find out how. What languages do these signs use? What linguistic and visual strategies are employed to convey rules and regulations? Lucky me, I had a great response when I reached out through my networks asking for photos of signs. I used a method called citizen science, which involves using members of the public to contribute to your research, in my case, data collection. Once I had these great photos, I used a framework called linguistic landscape to identify the different languages used, and I also recorded the linguistic and visual strategies. Guess which language was used the most? English. You see, Australian Muslims are culturally and linguistically diverse and do not have one community language in common. So English is a language that they use to communicate with each other and it is their lingua franca. In the rare instances where Arabic was used, it was used in conjunction with verses from the Quran to pull at the Islamic identity of the readers to remind them of their religious duty to follow rules. In other situations, they were reminded of their greater social responsibility, for example, parking legally outside the mosque so that the mosque does not get complaints. They also used polite words like please and thank you to encourage readers to follow rules. Accompanied by these were visual strategies like bold fonts, red letters, red borders, arrows, underlines, everything designed to draw the attention of the reader and get them to follow rules. Overall, the language of the signs reflected the language of surveillance, strong self-regulation practices related to behavior that are specific to Muslim spaces. Who knew that a sign could tell you this much about a community, about their history, their context, their languages, and their understanding of their place in society? This kind of nuanced understanding of the communication practices and linguistic resilience of the Muslim community is very significant in being able to engage a growing Australian minority. Thank you.